Hi, friends, and welcome to another edition of 15241 Today Talk. Jim Render and I are honored to have Angela Peterson <laughs> join us, uh, uh, an individual who has done so much for this, for this community. Uh, I, I have always believed that those individuals, particularly school board members that care enough to, to want to be on a school board and to, and to make a community better, congratulations to you and all you've done. Why don't you get us started there, Jim? Well, Angela, uh, you know, we've known each other a long time, and um, you're virtually a lifetime resident of Upper St. Clair, which not many people are. You know, I, I know when I moved here, one of the things that, uh, coming from Uniontown, virtually everybody in Uniontown were Uniontown High School mm -hmm. graduates. At Upper St. Clair, rarely are their parents that graduated from Upper St. Clair. A lot of people have moved in here. You, on the other hand, have been here uh, virtually a lifetime resident and uh, uh, an Upper St. Clair High School graduate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, we, we moved here when I was four. So it depends how you look at my lifetime. I, but, I understand. Uh, my family moved here at, when I was four and I you know, was privileged to go through the community and. Um, be a, a graduate of the school district and I want to say just first of all thank you for thanking me for what I do but I want to thank the community for all the wonderful things I've been able to participate in because I, I'm the person I am today because I was welcomed I was encouraged by the right people and I, people have let me um, be active in the community and that's been very important to me well, you're being modest. <laughs> well, as Lanny said, not, you know, people aren't fighting to be on the school board. Well, it's, I think that's a good indication that people are happy with what we've been able to do with the district. We, we are always looking to give our kids the best skill set for success. And that means, you know, we, we change our curriculum all the time. We don't believe in buying into a series of books and letting, waiting until the books need to be thrown out. We're always looking for new ideas and um, new curriculum concepts that keep up with what's happening in the world. Before we get well into the school board activities, let's, uh -huh. let's go back to your, uh, after, after you graduated from Upper St. Clair High School, uh, where did you go to college? Well, I'm gonna go back a little further. I went to Johnson School, and there's probably a lot of residents that don't even remember Johnson School. Where Wesley Academy is now was Johnson School. Um, that was our elementary school, and our principal was Albert Baker, and we now have Baker Elementary. So I like to think that I, I did somehow participate in, in the roots. I went to Fort Couch when it was a junior high, and then the high school. I graduated from the high school and went to school in um, Granville, Ohio, Denison University for two years, and then I transferred to University of Kentucky, where I graduated. Um, I, my husband um, went to UK, also a graduate of St. Clair, and two years of separation and I moved south. <laughs> uh, from uh, there we moved back here. My husband went to law school at Duquesne University. Um, I worked for a few years and I went to law school and finished law school actually in 93 for, at Pitt. So we had our own Pitt-Duquesne rivalry. Right in the house. Uh -huh. So, did you practice law? I've never practiced per se. My area of the law is a little niche area. I, I do ERISA compliance for a Taft-Hartley multi-employer pension fund. It, you know, it's about this much law, but um, it's, it's been a, I've had a very good living. I work for a uh, construction union organization. It's jointly operated by employers and employees and I work for them, so it's kind of nice to be a neutral. I always like to say I'm Switzerland in the group. <laughs> you got anything? You well, I, uh, um, you, you touched on this a little bit, but I, what do you think m makes Upper St. Clair such a, such a fabulous community? I believe it's always been the interest of the residents. We've always had, and, and I'm hoping, I'm see, I've seen a little dip lately, I'm hoping to see a resurgence in volunteerism. 
that was what always encouraged me to get involved. They, we were always looking for volunteers. And as a volunteer, I think I've done some of my great, made my greatest accomplishments. I enjoy my work, I enjoy my job, I do a good job, but my enjoyment doesn't come from my work. It comes from the, the volunteer activities that I've done. And I, Upper St. Clair has always encouraged people to try to find something that you want to do to contribute. And I think that attitude has, has been taught to our children. And actually, right now, it's the kids that are the greatest volunteers in the community. Um, it started as a little push as part of their academic uh, credit to do community service. But we have so many kids that do so much. I'm involved in youth steering, the Youth Steering Committee of Upper St. Clair, which is a, jointly supported by the township and the school district. To become a member, you have to be approved by both bodies. And there's budget interests from both bodies. But what we do is we try to educate the community about dangerous behaviors that can happen, but we also provide events and opportunities for safe entertainment. We have um, socials for the middle school kids out at the community recreation center and the kids from the high school actually run those events. The natural helpers come and uh, we have a dodgeball tournament and it's wonderful. We have student DJs. We could not do that event without the cooperation of the kids. And when you go into some of the nursing homes around and the chorus kids, the choir, they volunteer to go and, per and sing and participate at, at, at those um, uh, facilities. And the kids that work with food banks and make the trips to underprivileged areas to help build homes and, and share educational opportunities. I, I, that's, that's where you know I'm encouraged. But I do, I, I think the community has been a great community and fosters that deep interest. And Briefly before we started, we were talking about I've lived here my whole life, and there are there are a handful of us that have lived here all our lives. Uh, you know the Browns, uh, Betsy, St the Stuckert family, um, the Lesnitz. Uh, I mean, you know there, there are some, and I for, forgive me anybody that I didn't mention, but the thing that I'm encouraged by now is I see kids that graduated with my children coming back. And some of the parents that I worked with when my kids were here in school have told me that, oh, you know, we're selling our house to our son. And so I am really excited by the fact that roots are really being developed here. Because we, we like to think we're an old community, but we're, we're a fairly young community in, in the South Hills. And that's something that I take great satisfaction from seeing the kids come back and want to raise their families here. And also, I have to say, I'm very proud about how many of our administrators and staff in the schools have chosen to live in Upper St. Clair. I think that speaks volumes about the community and the education, because the administrators and the staff know what our education is, and they want to raise their kids here. And I, I, I take that as a personal achievement. This goes back. Also, uh, I wanted to mention your participation with the band parents. I loved band parents. Um, my daughter started as a freshman uh, and was interested in being in the band. And she uh, played the clarinet. And I knew Jim Bennett from some, some prior interactions when I was active in the PTA, another great organization in the community. The PTA does wonderful things. I was active in the PTA at, uh, when Beth was in uh, middle school at Four Couch. Got to know Jim Bennett, and Beth was joining the band, and Jim Bennett was the director of the band, and I couldn't come to the parent meeting. I forget what I was doing. I couldn't come to the first parent meeting, but I told him to feel free to volunteer me for <laughs> an activity in the band. I'd be happy to participate because Beth was going to be in the band. Well, the first band parent meeting that I could attend, I walked in the room and people applauded. Got a little nervous, and Jim said, Angela, in case I didn't tell you, you're gonna be running the concession stand. <laughs> 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 and it was like, 
I didn't even know where the concession stand was at the high school. But um, I ran the concession stand the time, the whole time that Beth was in high school and the time my sons were in high school. A um, woman by the name of Sue Lexi was my great partner for the period of time when Beth was in. And then Jane Dodd was my partner for the period of times my sons were going through. And Jane said, I'll help you if you stay as long as my children are in the high school. So Jane and I were partners until her youngest graduated from high school. So I spent a lot of hours in the concession stand. And all of the activities like band, um, I had a son on the swim team. Um, the activities that give the kids an opportunity to know students across the age groups and occupy a lot of positive time. Those are such good organizations. And I, I, I applaud all of the booster groups that support them and all the kids that spend so many hours, whether it be a sports activity or a chess club or um, yeah, the speech and debate has been a, a great area recently. And you also uh, did some work for the musicals yeah. and, and post-musical. Well, my daughter, again, uh, felt was a dancer and also thought that she should have been on the stage, but you know, it never, never quite happened. But um, when, when my kids volunteered for something and wanted to participate, I volunteered and participated. It was a way to get to know their children, to get to know other parents, to stay networked. And I took it as an opportunity to keep my kids safe because I knew when they were invited to someone's home, I knew that parent. But um, I got involved with the ca costumes and makeup a little bit, but my area is the cast party, and I still do the cast party. So when the musical wraps up, the last night, we take the kids and we do sort of a lock-in event. And uh, we've been going to Big Phoenix for a long time, back before it was used to be the Distinta. So since I've been involved, we take them, we have a DJ come, popcorn pizza, and then when they're ready to crash, they select a movie. We show four or five movies. They pick one at that time, so all the kids are in a movie. They get a little nap, a little downtime, so when you let them go at 6 o'clock in the morning, you're not afraid that they've been up all night. Because mm -hmm. um, it, it's funny, when you, when you go into the theater, so many kids are asleep. But I, st I still do that. I'm getting ready. As a matter of fact, I have to call and see if they'll take us back this year, ready to do that. And my sons were not musical, but they wanted to be involved in both the band and the musical because I think a lot of kids enjoy the cast party. So they were always ushers for the musical and they became band managers for the band so that they could go on the trips. So, the, I mean, there's opportunities for kids. You just have to look and everybody can find a niche, truly. Tell really us about can. your three children. You have uh, one in State College. My, I have, my daughter's the oldest. She probably would hate that I said that. And uh, she went to Northwestern um, had a wonderful guidance counselor that set her on the right direction. Uh, Dr. Kozel did that. And uh, she's still in Chicago. She does change management consulting. My sons are twins, uh, which was great fun. Um, and Matt went to, to Penn State and interviewed for one job in the state college uh, area school district. He interviewed for fifth grade, which elementary, their elementaries are K to five. And he told me, he, he was interviewing along with a girl he was very serious about and about to become engaged with. And she talked him into going to interview. And this is where she student taught. And there was this opening. And I said, Matt, you better talk to Megan right now. You're going to get that job. He said, no, no. I said, you have good grades. So hers are a little better. I said, Matt, you know, you're almost 6'5". They want a guy in that elementary school building. He called me and he said, they gave me the job. <laughs> Now, he and Megan did get married. They have three little girls. Uh, she also teaches in the same building. They, they hired her as well for a, a sub position and turned into a permanent job. So he interviewed uh, twice and won both. <laughs> won yeah. both. Actually, he did. But um, he, he um, teaches, and I'm very proud of him. He's very interested in technology. He's working on his master's and trying to... Um, think about different ways to use technology in education, which I think is really exciting. And I should say, when I was in college, I, I was going to be a language teacher, French and Spanish. Never quite happened for me. Um, I was the end of the baby boomers, couldn't get a job teaching. 
and ended up um, starting in a payroll office. And it kind of led to what I do now. I work predominantly with fringe benefits that pay for health care and pension. And then Rob went to Rochester Institute of Technology uh, and um, did very well. Um, he ended up being able to get his master's degree by taking a few more courses in the summer because they let him take graduate courses to satisfy undergraduate. And he works for Lockheed Martin in Fort Worth, Texas, a little bit further away than I'd like. Although ironically, he comes home. I actually probably see him a little bit more than I see driving out to State College. It's, a, it's kind of funny how that happens. <laughs> but, and Rob is married and um, two little dogs. Yeah, so I don't have any grandchildren there yet, but we'll see. <laughs> um, the uh, the new school board offices, uh, press box, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's all worked out well. Has it's it? worked out well. Uh, we uh, a project ago, we had looked at possibly changing the press box to the home side. And at that time, we had to make some different decisions with, with the financing. At that time, this, this gentleman right here oh. suggested, we had a design for the press box that had a slope ceiling with the glass in front, the slope ceiling. And at that time, he suggested that if we made the roof level, you could have a meeting room. And so that was kind of the model we were looking at at that time, but it wasn't approved. Well, when we started the current project and realized that we really needed to do something, the idea of moving that roof to a flat roof so that you'd have two sto useful stories became three useful stories. And we decided to move the administrative offices from the rent situation at the municipal building to our own space so that rather than paying rent, we're paying the debt service and it will end up with the building when, when that's satisfied. And it's been great. The, if you haven't been through the offices yet, we're trying to figure out how to have an open house. You know, there's still some things we're not quite finished with up there, but it is a wonderful facility. And um, we've had two school board meetings up there that I think have been pretty successful. And um, very excited about having, having made that move. The staff's excited about it. and. There's a different sense when you look out the window and you see the football field with the logo in the center. It's, it, it, you really know that you're working for the school, and it's, it's really been nice. And we're a little delayed with the pool, which is the construction, if people see it in the front of the building. We're building a um, competitive swimming pool that's a single depth, hoping that in the future we'll have a water polo team. And then we also have a diving well that you can control the temperature, and it's going to have, um, it has ramps in it, so it can be used for adaptive education uh, for special needs. And we're really excited about that. Our, all the diving teams in the area go down and practice at Pitt Trees Pool, so we're hoping to get some interest to use the pool and possible rental. I don't want to, you know over speak my bounds, but we're hoping that that'll happen with the pool. What's going to happen to the old pool? The old pool is going to be used as a wellness center. Oh. It, the final plans haven't been developed. Um, in the current budget, we're changing some of the air conditioning and the ceiling, filling in the old pool appropriately, and we're putting down a multi-surface um, floor at this point in time. We've looked at a couple ideas for changing the current cement bleacher situation. We can't demolish it, it w it w it's really cost prohibitive to do that. But there are some ideas for putting carpeting, installing low tables, letting the kids come down from the lunch, uh, the nutrition center, um, to sit there possibly and have food, you know, gather. And then that floor area could be used for possibly, you know, a pickup game during lunch but still be a facility that's available maybe for you know, practice by the cheerleaders, hip hop team, wrestling, something like that. So we're, we're looking at ways to make it into a usable space for certain existing programs, but developing an area where kids can walk away from the stress of the academic day and relax in, in, by perhaps doing something physical as playing basketball with friends or some other game, uh, pickleball, or just sitting on that renovated bleacher area and talking, quiet talking. So the, the, the current weight room will remain? 
current weight will, room will remain. It needs to be, it needs some refurbishing. We're aware of that. So, you know, there's, there's always, we always have a list, uh, you know, a to-do list. And, you know, we try to work at that pretty diligently. And um, the administration comes up with a lot of creative ways of doing those things. I'm very, I'm very proud of the school district and the work that's done by, by all the board members that I've known and the, the people that I work with right now. We've always tried to paddle the canoe in the same direction. Uh, we, we have dialogue and different ideas, but we always feel that when you come to a solution that is um, constructive and satisfying to everybody, then that's the best way to move forward. How, how long have you served on the school board? I've served on the board 20 years. I was appointed twice. Um, at the very beginning, I interviewed for position, and I was not appointed. Um, and then I interviewed for position, and I was appointed. But I lost that election that I had to run in. And then the board appointed me again. So uh, one interview, I didn't make the cut. Two interviews, I did make the cut. And then I was very gratified when the community did elect me. And I've been elected, just recently was elected for a four-year term. And um, I'm really excited about that because this project was ongoing and we have some new educational concepts that are in the mix and it's satisfying to be able to participate in the end. It's exciting to participate in the beginning, but you do want to see how things resolve and the success of a program. So I'm, I'm really excited about the next four years. Well, I, again, uh, everybody knows about servicing uh, on a school board and I think really uh, whether I agree with your politics or whether I don't agree with your politics or the same would be true for anybody living in this community but for you to serve on that uh, school board for that long is very commendable. It, it's the best time I've ever spent. I have to honestly tell you, it's the best time I've ever spent. I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about people, getting along with people. I've learned a lot about myself um, and making hard decisions sometimes when you know it's going to be unpopular. That, that's a tough thing for me. I've, my position in my family was always the peacemaker. I always wanted everybody, you know, I, was, I wanted my dad to love me. I wanted my mom to love me. I wanted to be the good student. You know, I was the one always going for the pat on the back. So it, it was really an educational opportunity for me to be in a situation where sometimes your opinion is not valued some, and, and, you know, your vote wasn't the side that won. And an understanding that you, you can't always make everybody happy with you. And learning that people can have different opinions and you can still like them. That, I think that's a really important lesson to learn. And that sometimes if you find out that people don't like you, well, you, ha you have those people that love you and that's the support you need. So I, I've become a stronger person because of the school board and the people that I've known, the mentoring that I've had on that board from so many other wonderful members before me and the wonderful people I work with now. It's been great. I think I could name a couple that wouldn't make that favorable <laughs> list. <laughs> hey, everybody I've met has taught me something. And that was one thing my father said, when you learn something, Nobody can take that knowledge away from you. And so I try to make a learning opportunity out of everything I do. And it's been very gratifying. I, ha I really am. I'm very satisfied with things that have happened to me in my life and things that I've been able to participate in. Are there times when um, you, the school board of Upper St. Clair gets together with school boards from other schools to compare notes as to where are we going, what are the new trends in education, et cetera? We're always sending our administrators to educational opportunities. Um, uh, research and development is something that's very important to us. We have a curriculum committee that meets constantly on all, there's a curriculum group for each subject matter area. And that's where a lot of that happens but the school board there is a pennsylvania school board association and a national school board association that we've been all been involved in we all go to those conferences barbolas has been president of both of those organizations and brings a lot 
to our board. But we also belong to a group called SHAZDA, the South Hills Area School District Association. We host a meeting here in, in our um, um, LGI once a month of that group, and that is our local school boards. Uh, we also belong to a jointure, uh, Parkway West Career and Technical School is a combination of 12 schools. We have a board member, I happen to be the board member that serves at Parkway. And that's interesting too, particularly in this day and age when technical education, those career jobs are really needed in, in our uh, country and in our area. And we have more and more students going from the high school to Parkway. We have so many wonderful areas out there for, we have diesel um, in addition to automotive. Um, people think of Parkway and you think of cosmetology. Well, there's cosmetology is a wonderful program, but we also have vet tech. We have the culinary program out there. It, it's a really great facility. And so that's, that's also a learning experience for the district to try to figure out how to encourage more kids to seek that kind of an opportunity. We also do a lot of things here in the high school where kids can start to get college credit. It, I mean, in addition to the AP testing and the IB program where you can get credits, there are programs um, of study with other schools, uh, uh, higher education schools, where they can go and start to accumulate those credits in addition to being still in high school. So. Um, you, this question started and I got off track. The board does educate itself and look for ways to become better. And we do look at other schools across the country for ways to improve our facilities and our education. But I think you, even in-house, we have some smart, smart people that have suggested some really great things. So we've started a lot of our own initiatives that have branched out to other places. Our Shop at USC program for our special needs kids is something that others, we, we were recognized by the Pennsylvania School Board Association and nationally for that program. And it's something that a lot of schools are looking into because it's a great educational opportunity. To finish up, could you, um, you, you were a founding member or of the Community Foundation? Well, I'd like to think I was a founding ma member, but I wasn't, but I did, participate. I did participate very early on. Linda Serene began that organization as an educational foundation, and that's what it does. It supports different educational endeavors, tries to pay for things that taxpayer dollars can't. And um, I just rolled off, I was a trustee for many terms, then I served as the executive director for six years, and I just rolled off of the foundation, turned it over to some wonderful people um, that are have changed the logo, have come up with some fresh new ideas, and as a matter of fact, they just approved a grant for um, the repeaters that have to do with our safety program. So you know that's going to benefit the community because it's a benefit to the police as well as being a benefit to our school security. So the foundation is a great, great way to get a tax deduction and help the district. So I would encourage people to make contributions to the foundation. And thank you very much for joining us. Oh, uh, this was, th I was, you as said you know, at the outset, what are we going to talk about? I we found 30 reluctant. minutes, didn't we? Huh? <laughs> yeah, I was reluctant, but it actually has been fun. And thank you so much for asking me. Yes. I appreciate it. Thank you. Linda Dozinski is our coordinating producer, and Glenn Ward is our producer director of 15241 Today Talk, subtitle Jim and Lanny on stage. <laughs> Thanks for joining us.